Whoa. <laughs> oh, that was an emotional one, huh? Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're here for a very special video because it's dedicated to one of my favorite actresses and for a very special occasion since we're celebrating her birthday today, October 17th. In her honor, I thought I would share five of my favorite films of hers. I had been pondering making this video for a few days now and it was actually a comment that I received in a previous video that I did on Jean Arthur about five different things that you probably don't know about her and Jonathan, he was very supportive. He said that he loved Jean Arthur as well and he will be also talking about some of his favorite movies of hers in his channel so i'll leave a link down below it is always great as well to receive your comments thank you so much for all your support so i wanted just to start this video by saying thank you and i truly truly appreciate it as always it was a bit of a challenge too to just pick out five movies so i'm going to include by the end of the video also bonus recommendations of other films that I love from Jean Arthur as well. I will be talking more about the five that I've watched more and that are closer to my heart. I will be talking about them in no specific order, so this is not a ranking of her movies. So in any case, stay until the end for those bonus recommendations and with no more ado this time, Let's jump into it. The first movie I will be talking about, and this is again no particular ranking, is Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. And although I love all the movies I will be talking about in this video, it is her role of Saunders in this movie that for me, it is my favorite. I absolutely adore this movie and it would be in my top 10 movies of all time in any case. Aside of the political and American background, what particularly moves me is the human story and the characters in this film. As you will know, this movie was directed by Frank Capra. It was written by Sidney Bookman. It is one of the best examples of why these movies are eternal and why Capra's collaborations with Jean Arthur are amongst his best. In this movie, she plays a disenchanted, cynical, super intelligent and sensitive woman. She works in the Senate, who's fed up with all the rotten politics in Washington, which is something that sadly I think hasn't changed much in general, not just in Washington. And at first she mocks James Stewart, who is a young man, idealistic young politician. He becomes a senator, but under false pretenses. Look, look at the cap of Romans, all lighted up, look at it. Uh, you, uh, you better relax, Senator. You'll get yourself plumb more out. To Don Quixote. And he turns out to be so much more than just a naive, idealistic man. And I think that out of all the fantastic characters in this movie, her role, Jean Arthur's role, is the one that evolves the most. She transforms throughout the movie. She quickly realizes that he's different, which ignites her own idealistic core that was suppressed by all this rotten politics around her and enables a change in her. And this transformation is the one that we as an audience identify with the most. And I think that if James Stewart is the heart of this movie, Jean Arthur Saunders is the soul of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. There are some scenes in this movie that truly move me that I can't help to bowl my eyes out every time I watch it and particularly quite frankly the moment I lose it in this movie is by the end sorry about any spoilers here when Jefferson Smith James Stewart's character is about to lose his voice completely he's run down he is almost defeated and he looks up and he finds Harry Carey's looking at him 
in a very warming and touching way and he smiles and Jimmy Stewart smiles back I just lose it in this particular moment of the movie and I just cry my eyes out and that is why I find this film absolutely absolutely beautiful and particularly Harry Curry even though he has very few lines here and he only smiles and gazes upon what's happening he is the the president of the senate he he just conveys so much he was such a legend at this point in his career after being a silent film actor who specialized in westerns and you can tell that he was so highly regarded and that there was so much affection towards the actor he is the best not that all of the actors and character actors in this movie are anything less because we have again claude rains edward arnold eugene Follett, and guy kiwi porter hall viola bondi and thomas mitchell in the year he reigned he absolutely reigned hollywood because he participated in 1939 in Gone with the Wind and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and Stagecoach. Three of the greatest productions in cinema history and three great movies. So we're here too for Thomas Mitchell. Gene Arthur is absolutely amazing. Even though again, Jim Stewart is the pivotal again character Jean Arthur in this movie, I think, has one of the best roles in her career. What an absolute treasure of a movie. What an absolute treasure of a woman. The second movie I'd like to talk to you about today, and that is one of my favorites, is The More the Merrier. Now, I have to be honest with this one because I, quite frankly, didn't know this movie existed until a few years ago and it was brought up actually to my attention because of a film that I adore that it's called Walk Don't Run. It's the last film that Cary Grant starred in and I didn't know that it was some sort of a remake of a previous movie directed by George Stevens called The More the Merrier. So I hadn't watched this movie growing up. I didn't know it existed. I should say that the two films are different in terms of the plot, but the premise and some of the running gags are identical. But coming back to The More the Merrier, this is a movie that when I watch it, I was so enchanted by her chemistry, Jean Arthur's chemistry here with Joel McRae is fantastic. They have one particular moment together, a romantic scene that I think is quite sexy and quite hot. Mr. Pendergast is so busy now that he just doesn't have time to think of it even. I can understand that. Why, well, just last week one evening he had a dinner conference with Leon M. Anderson, Donovan, and Nelson. And I think they have one of the best kisses I've ever seen in a classic comedy. The movie deals with the wartime housing shortage in Washington. And in this case, Jane Arthur's character, Connie, decides to rent one of the rooms in her apartment to help with the effort. And it ends up being rented by a retired industrialist played by Charles Coburn, who in turn rents half of the room to an airplane mechanic, I think, played by Joel McRae, Joe Carter in this movie. and. As you can imagine, everything gets mixed up and all sorts of funny situations take place because of that. And Coburn decides that he will be the matchmaker in this scenario. And he goes above and beyond to bring Gene Arthur and Joel McRae together. The movie was written by Garson Kanan, who I think however goes uncredited here and it was directed by George Stevens. I've talked about him in many videos. He is terrific and one of my favorites and this is actually his last film before he went to war and I think this was also his last comedy because upon his return to Hollywood the themes he chose to work on in films changed 
drastically so this is again his last movie before he went to war his last comedy and it's it's a great one he was a master in this genre in any case he started working with Laurel and Hardy with Leo McCary way back when. So he was very experienced with comedy, with gags, and it's something that you see here. And I think that he was very fond of Jean Arthur. And the way she appears in this movie is absolutely charming. She is so funny and so frisky. There are several scenes that I love in this movie when she is dancing and also Joel McRae is dancing in another room. And also I love the scene in which Joel McRae gives her that sort of a suitcase which has such cute compartments in there and the way they act and the way the scene evolves, oh man, they, they played so beautiful together. She's absolutely delightful. She's absolutely brilliant and funny and another one of the best roles she ever played. Sadly, this was her only Oscar nomination, but in any case, we're here today to give her all our appreciation and all our love. The third film that is one of my absolute favorites of Jean Arthur and I'd say much like in the case of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, one of my all-time favorite movies is Shane. A movie that, as I've said, I didn't watch also until fairly recently but for other reasons than the case of the more the merrier. In this case I was aware that this movie existed, it's just that I had postponed watching it for such a long time. Even though I love westerns and I grew up watching westerns, for some reason this wasn't a movie that I was exposed to growing up and in my mind I had pictured this movie as being somewhat long and somewhat more psychological. So I just postponed watching this movie out of prejudices and I don't know if that's something that's happened to you too but it's happened to me quite recently with a few movies that I thought I wasn't gonna like but now I've changed my mind completely and that's something that happened with me with Shane because when I finally watched it I realized how wrong I had been and I, I was just blown away it is such a beautiful film the photography, the way it is shot, the message of the movie, the score, the soundtrack of this film, the the performances of this film. Incidentally, this was Jean Arthur's last role and it was because George Stevens called her and they had such a good rapport working together. So I know that also her role here is a secondary role, but I think she's so great in this movie even though it's obviously Alan Ladd's movie. She plays such a wonderful character here. There's so much going on in here in terms of what's not being said and there's so much more meaning in the words that are being said. There's so much more feeling behind the words. It is again one of my absolute favorite films. There's so much to discuss yet if I have to speak from the heart this is a movie that has such a powerful message. As I said is in the quite the opposite spectrum of what the more the merrier represents. After George Stevens came back from the war he, as I was just saying, changed completely what he wanted to talk about in films and this is a perfect example of that. I think that it's one of the most beautiful things I've seen on the screen and for sure Jean Arthur plays a major part and it's one of the reasons why this film is really close to my heart. Alright, a total change of pace here. We'll just lighten the mood with another one of my favorites of her and that is the comedy, the screwball comedy called Easy Living, which I know for many of you too is another favorite and it's no wonder because who could get over hunky Ray Milan in this film. Jean Arthur, beautiful, funny, intelligent Jean Arthur and also Edward Arnold who was always a much welcomed actor, character actor. 
again screwball comedy it was a genre that Jean absolutely excelled at and she was just again one of the queens the absolute queens and in this case we have a story that was written by Preston Sturgis a few years before he started directing his own screenplays and you can tell you can really tell that it's one of his stories there's a lot of madcap situations a lot of zany characters and there's a lot of physical comedy a lot of slapstick practically every one of the characters in this film falls at some point or the other and it's so funny it's so bubbly and in some instances it doesn't make any sense and yet it does and it doesn't matter to be honest because it's such a wonderful and fantastic entertainment and also in the case of the more the merrier this is a film that it's available on youtube for everyone to enjoy and that is such a fantastic thing i heartily recommend that you watch it if you haven't already or watch it again because quite frankly this year we all need some easy living the film was directed in this case by Mitchell Leeson who was also a very experienced director for the genre he directed also one of my favorite screwball comedies called Midnight with Claudette Colbert John Barrymore Donna Michi and Mary Astor I adore that movie and in quite a similar way these two movies are also kind of a twist to the Cinderella story something that in my recent videos keeps popping up every now and then I just think that every movie in Hollywood is Cinderella <laughs> now that I come to think of it in some way or the other but Leeson was again a very experienced director he started off I think as an art director and he cared a lot about clothes and fashion so his movies were tended to be very elegant very luxurious but in some cases he tended to be at odds with the screenwriting team and that's because he would be directing stories from either Preston Sturges or Billy Wilder who were creators with such strong personalities that they wanted to obviously take care of their own material so even though I think he was quite experienced and quite a good director he was in some instances again at odds with those very very talented storytellers and in this case Easy Living is one of his best lastly one of my favorite movies that Gene Arthur appeared in is another Frank Capra movie and in this case is You Can't Take It With You a wonderful movie in which we as an audience are invited into one of the quirkiest yet one of the most charming families in movie history the Vanderhoffs <laughs> You Can't Take It With You is another movie filled with madcap, zany situations, but in this case, being a Capra film, it has a whole other message that is quite obvious in his juxtaposing the Vanderhoffs, lead by Martin Vanderhoff, played fantastically by Lionel Barrymore, and the Kirbys with Edward Arnold once again and Jim Stewart living in a totally different way and the message is right there in the title you can't take it with you and I think it's one of the best Capra movies in my opinion and even though much of the things that are discussed in this movie and the approach might be dated nowadays there's so much about this film and also about for instance it's a wonderful life that it still resonates a lot with us at least it does with me in the way that these are such life reaffirming movies in which we are shown through the lens of comedies what is really important in the world you may or may not agree but there's something about the way this movies are explained and are filmed that it is absolutely impossible that you're not at some point moved by you can't take it with you or it's a wonderful life 
for the same matter. Again, in this case, Jean Arthur plays yet again another brilliant character, a perfect example for why we love Jean. Her role in this movie is so amazing. She tries to navigate being a member of the Vanderhoffs and also trying to get married or trying to be with James Stewart who belongs to another world. She is so genuine in these movies, especially in Frank Capra movies. It seems so authentic and so brilliant that you are always, always rooting for Jean Arthur no matter what in any movie she appears in. Aside from her and Jim Stewart, we have, I think, one of the most powerful characters and certainly actors in this movie, Lionel Barrymore. And some of the best scenes, obviously, in this movie are the ones in which he appears. And also, the scenes he has with Jean are also pretty touching and moving. I can't tell you how many times during this year I wish I could go to the house they have and like what happens in the last scene of the movie be there with Edward Arnold and be there with them with Edward Arnold and Lionel Barrymore playing the harmonica playing Polly Wooly Doodle and dancing with Ann Miller and painting with Spring Boynton and hugging Jean Arthur and Jim Stewart and what can I say? It is another movie that is also truly close to my heart. I always feel that there's a magic atmosphere there that I wish I could be a part of and that it always lingers on when I watch those movies. So I heartily, heartily recommend this one. God, I didn't expect to, <sighs> to be this moved really, but I guess we can all relate to that this year, really. Um, gosh, really. Jean. All right, so that was all as far as my five, top five favorite movies of Jean Arthur goes. But as I said in the beginning, don't think that I'm out of favorites. As promised, here's a bonus round of films that I also love about Jean Arthur, that I'm also very fond of, and that I also think you should watch as well. And those movies are Adventure in Manhattan, which is also a movie that I talked about in the previous video I did on Jean Arthur. It is another film that she did with Joel McRae, this time it is a mixture of genres. It is a comedy but has also bits of mystery in it. It is certainly, I think, not as good as The More the Merrier, but it is highly entertaining. Also, Thomas Mitchell is in the movie, so I think that I have given you enough reasons to at least check it out. Another movie with Jean Arthur that I really, really like and that it's really, really good it's the talk of the town with Cary Grant and Ronald Coleman. It is a highly entertaining movie yet. It is, I think, a complex one, another comedy that at times has mystery and that has also a powerful message behind. It was again directed by George Stevens and it is a movie that I think I could talk about just on its own in a different kind of video. And lastly, another movie that I like is Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, another Frank Capra movie. I quite prefer, to be honest, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and you can't take it with you, but also Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. It was the first time that Jean Arthur and Frank Capra collaborated together. It was, I think, her second breakthrough role after The Whole Town Stalking, directed by John Ford, which is a movie that I haven't yet watched and I so have to because I've seen it being recommended many times. So again, all these movies, so worth watching and learning more about Jean Arthur. If I have left out any film of Jean Arthur that you really love and that you enjoy, please leave it in the comments down below. I always love learning more and having more movies 
lined up to watch in the future so as always thank you so much for watching i hope that you enjoyed this video i hope that you'll watch some of the movies today to celebrate jean arthur or these days to celebrate her birthday and in any case as always take care stay safe thank you so much for watching thank you so much for sharing the love for classic movies for sharing the love for jean arthur and if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you feel like talking about more fantastic films if you want in any case and see you all in my next video thank you so much bye today in her honor i thought i would here is the time i will talk about shane hop hop